Hello, my name is Antoine Polis, and today I'll talk about how to robustly estimate joint kinematics from smartphone video using a video post detection. So this work is part of a bigger project called OpenCap, where we estimate kinematics, but also dynamics from a smartphone video. So marker-based motion capture is the standard way of measuring joint angles, kinematics, when analyzing human movements for biomechanical applications. However, marker-based motion capture is resource intensive. It is expensive in equipment, it is time consuming, it requires expertise and also lab space. And for these reasons and others, analysis based on marker-based motion capture have often been limited to small scale research studies. Video post detection has become an appealing alternative to marker-based motion capture. It is a marker-less approach and it is scalable, which makes it an ideal candidate for larger scale studies and incorporation within clinical practice. One approach to estimate joint angles from videos is to record videos from multiple views, to process those videos using a video Post detection algorithm like open post, to use triangulation to reconstruct the 3D trajectories of the identified video key points, and finally to use a modeling and simulation software like OpenSim to run inverse kinematics and estimate joint angles. However, video post detection still lacks accuracy. A first problem is that the set of video key points identified by most post detection algorithms is sparse. And therefore you lack information to robustly capture the kinematics of the joints between the shoulders and the hips. A second problem is that most algorithms work frame by frame. And there is therefore a risk to have non-smooth trajectories across frames. And overall those problems together with others, can lead to inaccurate joint kinematics, as it is illustrated here. So all projects aim to address these problems and to develop a robust method for estimated 3D joint kinematics from smartphone video. So the key ingredient to our approach is that we wanted to use a more comprehensive set of markers, such as to reduce sparsity and increase the accuracy and robustness. In particular, instead of using video key points, we wanted to use anatomical markers at known positions. However, since anatomical markers are not identified from post detection algorithms, we needed a way to estimate their position. We did that by training a deep learning model to predict anatomical marker positions from video key point positions. We used long short-term memory networks, which leverage time series and therefore partly address the temporal inconsistency limitation of common post detection algorithms. To train the networks, we created a training set based on motion capture data processed with OpenSIM. We extracted data from open source repositories where each motion file came with an OpenSIM model. And for each OpenSIM model, we added virtual markers corresponding to the video key points on the one hand and the anatomical markers on the other hand. We could then extract for each motion file the 3D trajectory of each virtual marker. And we used these trajectories as features and labels when training on networks. In total, we used 972 hours of motion capture data. This was extracted from 10 data sets and over 300 subjects, performing various tasks like walking, running, squatting, jumping, and cutting. We augmented the size of the data set by scaling each OpenSea model up and down, such as to represent people of different heights. We also rotated the data about the vertical axis, such as to represent motions performed along various directions. After training the networks, we incorporated them as part of this pipeline to estimate joint angles from videos. So we added this extra step 
to predict anatomical markers from video keypoints. And we used those anatomical markers as input to our modeling and simulation software with the goal of improving the accuracy and robustness of joint angle estimation. So the next question is, does that really produce more accurate results than when using video key points directly? So to answer this question, we evaluated joint angles estimated from videos against joint angles estimated with, estimated with marker-based motion capture. We collected market data from 10 subjects performing four different types of activities, gates, squats, drop jump, and sit to stand. And we estimated joint angles using inverse kinematics in OpenSea. So that's our reference. At the same time, we collected videos from two iPhones positioned at plus minus 45 degrees from the subject. And from these videos, we estimated joint angles in two ways. First, by using video key points, and second, by using anatomical markers predicted from the video key points. We quantified the errors for 18 lower extremity degrees of freedom with respect to marker-based motion capture using a mean absolute error. And we tested two pose detection algorithms, open pose and HRNet. What we found is that in both cases, using the predicted anatomical markers decreased the errors as compared to using a video key points. The mean error decreased by between two and four degrees, but also the range of errors was much smaller using anatomical markers as compared to video key points. The improvements were apparent for the hip flexion, pelvis tilt, and lumbar flexion degrees of freedom, which were prone to larger errors when using video key points due to the sparsity of these key points between the shoulders and the hips. So how, overall, we now have a way to robustly capture 3D joint kinematics from smartphone video. So motivated by these results, we incorporated this pipeline into OpenCap, which is a new software package we developed to estimate 3D joint kinematics and kinetics from smartphone video. OpenCAP is packaged with an iOS application and a web application to facilitate data collection. OpenCAP automatically computes joint kinematics from videos in the cloud and therefore does not require any expertise or specialized hardware. OpenCAP is freely available for researchers. To learn more about OpenCAP, please check out Scott Ulrich's presentation at WCB. Take a look at our preprint and please visit our website. And on that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. I'd like to thank all my collaborators and sponsors, and please feel free to reach out for any question. Thank you.